Myrtle Beach. Sun, sand, bright lights, and entertainment. Each year, 12 million vacationers flock to the Grand Strand. For many, it's to bask in the summer sunshine. For many, it's the opportunity to enjoy the pavilion go-karts. Here, boy. Here, boy. Wayne, we're going to get Wayne. After we get, get on back there. What have you got the black flag out for? When men fulfill their boyish fantasies of being race car drivers. For a few, it's a fantasy fulfilled. With real race cars, as the NASCAR Goodies Dash Series visits Myrtle Beach Speedway, where 16-year-old boy future stars battle the veterans of NASCAR, the grizzly old men on the half-mile asphalt of Myrtle Beach Speedway. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm Bill Hennessy. And the Goodies NASCAR Dash Series is in town for the WKZQ 101. 43 cars came to town to battle for a starting position. 26 plus four provisionals in what will be the hottest race of the year since Daytona and the Florida 200. Joining me in the broadcast booth tonight is Chuck Carlin. Chuck? Bill Hennessy, this is going to be the best race we've seen in the Dash Series. As you mentioned, 43 cars, only 30 of them getting the start. It's going to be the most competitive race we've seen. When we return, we'll give you the starting lineup and see the green flag here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. 30 racers are poised to go here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. The third member of our broadcast team is trackside with the front row starters. Here's Tim Myers. Bill, we're down here with the front row for tonight's WKZQ 101. Larry Cottle, multi, uh, many time champion here in the stash division. 29 career victories, two victories this year. Uh, a couple of poles this year, Hickory, and again tonight. Larry, how do you feel out there tonight? Wild. I'll tell you, the racetrack, it's hard to gather these tires and cars together with the track. The track's got almost like gravel, and the hot sun this afternoon, about the time we were qualifying, the cars were slipping and sliding. Hopefully tonight the cars will tighten up a little bit for us, and we'll put on a good show for the fans here and the people on television. Danny, congratulations, sitting outside the front row. Well, thanks, Tim. It's been... Uh, it's been a long road this year. We start out a new motor program, and we've just now begin to get everything right. And uh, you know, we we just hope we put on a good show for everybody. That's what it's all about: make the fans happy, make everybody have a good race. Good strong front row starting this race tonight. Thank you, Tim. Our starting lineup for the WKZQ 101: Larry Cottle and the Husqvarna Massey Racing Dodge on the pole. Danny Bagwell will flank him. Ernest Winslow and the XL Manufacturing Chevrolet and Scott Weaver in the Weaver Racing Chevy will go off for it. Going fifth, the present point leaders Edward Howell and last year's winner Will Hobgood. Then we find Mickey York in the Cobra Electronics Pontiac and Mike Swaim in the Fox Racing Pontiac in eight. Ninth on the grid is 17-year-old Lyndon Amick and Johnny Chapman, another former winner here. Then in 11th position, David Amick in only his second start in the Amick Farms Pontiac and Destry Gardner in 12th. 13th goes Dan Partis and Robert Johnson Jr. in 14th. Dave Stacy and Jeff Collier making up the 16th spot. 17th is Chris Brown, 18th Paul Carr. 19th is the young B.J. Mackey in the Mackey Racing Chevrolet and Davis Myers in the Carolina International Pontiac. 21st is David Hutto, 22nd Dwayne Haynes Jr. 23rd, the only female in the field, Sherry Blakely, and Michael Leathers goes off 24th. 25th on the grid, Larry Foxworthy, followed by Fleet Cruz. And now your four provisional starters, Gary Moore, Danny Snell, 29th on the grid, Bill Wilson, and 30th, Wayne Morrow. And those are your 30 starters here for the WKZQ 101. Myrtle Beach Speedway is .538 miles in length. We go in-car camera now to the front row man, the Sitting on the pole, Larry Cottle carrying the Husqvarna in-car camera. The camera being carried by Mike Swain, being sponsored by Iskaderian Cams. And our third ca in-car camera, the Roberts Wholesale Body Parts entry of Robert Johnson, Jr. So three in-car cameras as we bring the grid around for the start of this 101 lap. WKZQ Goodies NASCAR Dash Race. Jimmy Howell throws the green. They're down to turn one. Larry Caudle jumps out to a one-car length advantage over Danny Bagwell. Ernest Winslow running in third and Scott Weaver in fourth. Now Winslow looks to the inside for the second spot. Winslow, always a hard charger in the bright yellow Pontiac, moves over to the inside of Bagwell, but Bagwell takes the high line through three and four. 
to pick up second place. Weaver having a good strong run. He saddled the pole here a couple of years ago, but has never had a strong finish at Myrtle Beach. Weaver trying to catch up with Ernest Winslow. Winslow bobbles just a little bit in turn two. And he's trying to catch right up to the Danny Bagwell entry running in second spot. Your leader, Larry Connell, feeling the heat now as second and third have caught up to him. Back in fifth place, Ed Howell, the present point leader, taking the Campbell Soup Pontiac up to fifth. He's being followed by last year's winner, Will Hobgood in the black pro cal car. Down the back straightaway, Larry Call, the Husqvarna Dodge, leads the way here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Danny Bagwell running in that second spot. Here's Ernest Winslow. He looks low once again. Scott Weaver wants to go along with him, but Bagwell once again is able to hold on to that second position. Once again, Caudill flexes the muscle going down into turn number one, crosses the tunnel turn between turns one and two, moves down the back straightaway with a two-car length advantage over the Ford Probe of Danny Bagwell. Bagwell has another two-car length separating he and Ernest Winslow. That's his most breathing room from second to third position, and Scott Weaver pulling right up on Winslow. And the old pig farmer in the bright yellow machine rides in third place. The top four cars now pulling away from the rest of the field with Caudill now seeing that the yellow flag is flying, being brought out for Sherry Blakely, who has spun between turns one and two. She's nosed into the inside guardrail just beyond the tunnel here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. And Sherry Blakely uh, being attended to by the records, it didn't look like they did a whole lot of damage to that car, so she should be able to continue. Well, they're giving her a shove backwards and turned her around now. She's going to be able to continue under her own power. The green flag waves once again. Larry Caudill hard in the throttle goes back to the front of the field. Bagwell riding in second place. Now Danny Bagwell being sponsored by one of the big cable companies, TCI, riding in second place here, looking for a good, strong finish with that board here tonight. Ernest Winslow and Scott Weaver trying to catch right up to Bagwell. As you can see, Winslow goes down low trying to catch Bagwell. Now drifts up a little bit high and falls in single file behind him. Larry Cobble, though, enjoying that one-car length advantage. Off the second quarter, now in the back straightaway. A one-car length advantage being carried by Larry Cottle. Cottle has 30 NASCAR Dash Series wins under his belt. He's been racing in this series since the early 70s and its inception as the baby grand division of NASCAR. He's holding on now. He's pulling away by some two car lengths over Danny Bagwell. Then it's a car length back to Ernest Winslow and Scott Weaver's beginning to put on the pressure. He looks low under Winslow as they head down the back stretch. Well, night is starting to fall over Myrtle Beach Speedway as we got this race underway in the twilight. It's growing uh, dark here at Myrtle Beach. The lights are starting to shine. We see some reflection off the cars at the present time. And Danny Bagwell's beginning to pick up the pace just a little bit. He looks low coming out of turn two, and they head down the back stretch. Follows back in single file. So now Larry Caudill feeling the heat. Bagwell wants to make a charge as they head into three. It's interesting about the little four-cylinder engine that's in the Ford Probe. It's basically an aluminum block four-cylinder carrying a V8 head off of one of Robert Yates's Winston Cup engines. It's all legal. The head on the 12 car is a cast iron configuration, the engine built by Jan Smith. Down the back straightaway, Caudle is making that little Dodge really haul the mail. And Bagwell, though, is not letting him go. He's within two car lengths of him. Here comes Ernest Winslow and Scott Weaver again. They're trying to look low on Bagwell. All three of them single file this time through, but as they go into turn two, here goes Winslow. He tries to look low under Bagwell for the second spot again. Well, certainly the Husqvarna machine is running at full song, going into turn three and beneath the scoreboard here, moving back onto the front straightaway. It's interesting, the front straightaway here at Myrtle Beach Speedway has something of a dog leg. This is a miniature Daytona for these NASCAR Dash Series cars. Larry Caudill enjoying a two-car length advantage. Danny Bagwell running in that second spot. Ernest Winslow in third. Now Scott Weaver feels some heat. Here comes Mickey York to the inside. Mickey York in the Cobra Electronics number 24, a man who has won here on two previous occasions looking for win number three. And now we go back a little further in the field in the 33 car of Lyndon Amick, 17-year-old former go-kart driver, is getting close to cracking the top five. Linda trying to run a very smooth line. Dan Pardis was right there with him alongside. We jump back to the leader here. There's some three-car length advantage over Danny Bagwell. And then Ernest Winslow looks underneath of Bagwell. And Scott Weaver still has his hands full with Mickey York. Well, Bill Wilson getting passed as he comes out of the pits here in the early going. And he's already a lap down. Larry Caudill, the class of the field right now, 
with an eight or nine car length advantage over the second place runner, and he wants to put some distance between himself and Danny Bagwell in the Ford Probe. This is the strongest lead that he's had so far from Bagwell on back. It's a real tight race. Mickey York and Scott Weaver side by side for the last couple of laps. Mickey York has been down low. Weaver has been running it up high. Larry Caudill makes it look easy getting around here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. That's because he's been racing the series for a long period of time and has a lot of victories. 30 so far in his career. Second in the all-time win list to the man that uh, basically ran this series forever and ever out of North Carolina, and that, of course, Dean Combs. Dean Combs with well over 50 victories in his career. Robert. Problems right in front of our in-car camera being carried by Robert Johnson, Jr., the Roberts Wholesale Body Parts entry. He's moving up behind a car that's showing a lot of smoke. I believe that is Dave Stacy. Now, David Amy gets in between Robert Johnson and the smoking car. Dave Stacy, the man that ended up in the lake back in the Florida 200 at Daytona. The car is loose and cut down the right rear tire and almost skidded up the racetrack in front of our in-car camera. Robert Johnson just barely able to get past David Stacy on that move. Sparks flying off the Dave Stacy car. Stacy possibly has broken a panhard bar across the rear end, which locates the rear end in the car. And in doing so, it's cut down his right rear tire. He's left a lot of debris on the racetrack. Meanwhile, Larry Caudill is trying to put another lap on Sherry Blakely, the lady driver. Sherry Blakely is trying to hold him off. She's been just in front of him here the last lap or so, and Larry Caudill really has sort of paced himself. A little debris being shown here on the speedway, so Larry Caudill makes his way down the back stretch, and apparently the caution coming out. Yellow on the racetrack, more debris. And with the yellow on the racetrack, the field under the toe of the pace car, which is now coming out on the racetrack, and will pick up the leader, Larry Caudill. After 22 laps of competition, there's your top four. We'll be back with more with the Goodies Dash Race at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Once again, welcome back to Myrtle Beach Speedway for the Goodies NASCAR Dash Series. Larry Caudill gets ready to go back to green flag racing here. Bill Hennessy along with Chuck Carl and Tim Myers covering the pit action in this 101 lap race for the four cylinder buzz bombs of NASCAR. Caudill down the back straightaway, trying to stretch that lead back out once he took the green flag again. Danny Bagwell trying to track him back down. He's about three car lengths off the pace. Here comes Mickey York. York wanting to make a challenge for that second spot. Now settles back in single five. This is one of York's better racetracks. Looking for his third win here. He's won two previous, and he's also won two previous races this year on the Dash Series. Larry Caudill in the Dodge, leading the way. The Mopar product, certainly the class of the field at this juncture of the race. Then Mickey York trying to stick the nose down below of Danny Bagwell's car as they head into turn number two right now. Bagwell up high, York down low. York's going to get the advantage. Winslow wants third place. Winslow brings his bright yellow Pontiac over to the inside and races hard, but Bagwell gets into the corner and cuts him off. So Bagwell holds on to that third spot. Here comes Winslow again. He tries to look low as they come through the front straightaway and into turn one. Your leader, Larry Caudill, by two car lengths over Mickey York. Always plenty of exciting action. This track being .538 miles in length is the second largest track the cars will race on this year. And Myrtle Beach provides a lot of action. It's quick, it's fast, and it's furious as Mickey York has picked up the rear deck lid of the Husqvarna Dodge. And Larry Caudill trying to do everything he can to hold on to the lead, but here comes Mickey York. He looks to the inside, now goes up a little bit high. We're moving up on some lap traffic now. That's Mike Leathers right in front of him. Leathers, by the way, four times a Sports Car Club of America national champion in Formula 440 open wheel cars, running a car from Gary Moore tonight. And Mickey York dives over to the inside. Will try to make it stick. He will actually try to thread the needle off the second quarter and does so, moving between Leathers and Caudle. I can't believe that move off the second turn. In car camera on a replay here. This is Caudle's view of it going into turn one and off the second quarter. And look how close Mickey York came to hitting him in the left front fender. But these guys are pros, and he certainly proved it off the second quarter with that bold move. Two KG veterans. What a move it was. Both of them coming out without wrecking. Nice in-car camera shot provided by Husqvarna Power Equipment. 
York now with the lead moves off the fourth quarter and back down the front straight away here. This is where this guy likes to run up front clear sailing no traffic in front of him. He just used it to his advantage to get by the former leader Larry Caudle down the back straight away into turn three running a classic line in car camera with Robert Johnson Jr car in front of him trailing a little bit of smoke and now car getting loose and that is Ed Howell Ed Howell the 07 Campbell soup car the present point leader in the series has spun his car there is no yellow on the track but I bet you there's some oil Mickey York your leader one of the longtime competitors in the series is Gary Moore three decades of racing in the NASCAR goodies dash series driver's been around for a long time you know you don't get here without the help from some important people who help you along the way. Bill, if there's a racing division I love, it's the Goodies Dice Series. It's allowed me to race at places that I could only dream about. You know, for 16 years we've been racing uh, this division, and we've raced against like Cut Strickland, Davey Allison, Robert Presley, Michael Waller. It's just been a great division for us. But Wayne out in NASCAR, plus NASCAR in the whole, has really helped us a lot. They're really dedicated to the division. The goodies people, Jerry Hazel comes with us every race. He has really helped a lot, you know. Then we've got people like Willie Patrick in the media, you know. He's given a lot of people real good articles and stuff like that, which draws a lot of exposure. Just, there's tons of people, you know. We've got people like uh, my sponsors. That, they really helped me a lot this year, you know. It's, we haven't gotten one major sponsor, but we have a lot of little sponsors. You know, Lucas Oil Products, Tommy Torbert. Bill Richter, Bill Martin, we just got a lot of people that's come in, it's just like a big family to us. We have a family reunion 17 times a year at the racetrack, you know, and everybody really enjoys seeing everybody. We've got friends that you only see 17 times a year. Well, Gary not having a great run here tonight at Myrtle Beach Speedway as Mickey York about to overtake him and put him a lap down, but we have a yellow on the uh, track right now. Uh, car is stalled, several of them over in the fourth quarter, and in doing so, the yellow flag is out here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. But Tommy Torbett, one of the gentlemen helping uh, Gary on his car this season, says he wants to invite the series champion from the Goodies NASCAR Dash Series down to Key Largo, Florida, and the Ocean Reef Club for the opportunity to go deep sea fishing above aboard the 42-foot Bertram yacht that they call the Hammer Time with Captain Steve Hamilton. So I know that the series champion is looking forward to that visit to Florida as guest of Tommy Torbett. The 99 car in the pits, unfortunately, Car not running that good here tonight, but I know Tommy Torbett's still wishing his driver Gary Moore well here at Myrtle Beach and in his endeavors all season long. Well, that's a great opportunity to go down there and fish just a little bit. And uh, uh, I mean, what champion wouldn't want to go enjoy a nice trip on a nice yacht like that? Well, actually, Tommy said any of these guys who race in the series are invited down with him to go <laughs> fishing. I know I'm looking forward to going down there myself one of these days. The green flag back out, and the 24 car of Mickey York back up front. David Hutto, who's a lap or so down, finds himself sandwiched in between first and second place as Larry Caudle has got to work around him through the traffic. Goes to the high side of the racetrack in turn four, getting chased to the Pontiac Grand Am that's leading this event. Now Larry Cottle is able to get around David Hutto. Mike Swain will try to do the same likewise in that third position. Hutto separating the second and third place cars as they come out of two. Mickey York down the back straightaway in the Cobra Electronics. Pontiac Grand Dam leads the parade here at Myrtle Beach Speedway in the WKZQ 101. A little further back, a lot of thick traffic. Scott Weaver's in trouble. Goes up the racetrack, pinches the fleet cruise car along with Larry Foxworthy, Foxworthy up against the wall Weaver writes his car the yellow comes out but Foxworthy gets damaged to the right front corner of his car fleet cruise was able to make it through okay that could have been a very scary situation but all three cars look like they're going to be able to continue with a little damage the opportunity to race these cars, dreams do come true, from go-kart racing to NASCAR Dash Series racing, especially for the Amick brothers out of Batesburg, South Carolina. That's right, you know, that, that's been the biggest dream I've had is to race. And, you know, it started a couple years ago, and now I'm racing in Dash Series, and it's, it is like a dream to race there. What's it like to drive one of these cars as compared to a go-kart? It's a big difference, you know, you go and you drive, and you got much more horsepower, and. It's a lot of fun, though. I really enjoy it. 
for your brother, David. Primarily, he's a businessman associated with a family business. What got him involved with racing, David? I spotted for Lennon for a while and uh, really got excited about the sport and watching him. And, and then I talked to him about it one day and he said, uh, Dave, why don't you get in the car and try it? And uh, I like it about as much as I do selling chicken. And Monday following tonight's race, where does David Hamick go? I'm in the sales and marketing department at Amick Farms, so I'm selling chicken during the week. And what about Brother Lyndon? Uh, I'm a senior in school, so I just go to school. Unfortunately, Brother David Amick is coming down the pit lane now, possibly some problems on the 35 car. I believe that his car has not been handling as well as he would like. Mark Blessing, the crew chief, waiting on him, and Blessing will come around and make a chassis adjustment on the Amick Farms Pontiac. This is only the second race that David has ever run. His first event was at Bristol, Tennessee. What a track to go to for your rookie uh, indoctrination to the world of NASCAR Dash Series competition. One of the toughest tracks on the speedway, and he did a, a great job there until the very end when uh, he got involved with, a, uh, with a, a wreck there at the very end. Well, Chuck, I've driven here at Myrtle Beach Speedway before, and I told David earlier today, I said, I'm really impressed with how well you're getting around here with a limited amount of experience that you have. The Dodge Daytona pace car has hit the pit lane. The green flag is out. And once again, Mickey York has charged back up to the front. Larry Caudle riding in second place. We see the car of Mike Swain clearing Sherry Blakely down. But the front two runners nose to tail. And looks like Caudle is going to make a charge. Caudle goes to the inside. He pulls right up on the rear bumper. York sees him, pulls on down, and maintains about a car length advantage as they come off a of turn four, though. Caudle tries to narrow that gap back down. Well, I believe Caudle is running a rather of the conservative race at this juncture. The reason being, you want to save your tires until late in the go, but now he makes a hard effort off the second corner, pulls the car down to the inside. If he can shove it into turn three beneath Mickey York, he can make the pass, but no go this time by as Caudle realizes we still have a lot of laps left. That's certainly the case. Caudle has the strongest points when he goes into turn two. This time as they go into turn one, Caudle sets it up once again. He tries to pull that fender along the quarter panel of Mickey York's car. York up high. Caudle down low as they head down the back stretch. In car camera with Robert Johnson Jr. riding in fifth place. He's passed by Dan Partis. Partis just took over fifth. Ooh. Johnson hits the brake to keep from running into the back of Dan Partis. Spins sideways. He's hit once by David Hutto. There goes uh, David Amick Aim by, spinning, and now Fleet Cruz is into the front of the Robert Johnson Jr. car. Cruz pulls away. Fleet. Look at all the cars scattered down there, including Ernest Winslow with the bright yellow car. It looks like David Amick and David Hutto will remain in turn four. Everybody else pulls away. Lots of damage on about four cars. And David Amick trying to get his car refired, and we see the the puff of smoke there from David Hutto's car, so he's got it refired. And, and Lee Cruz. Cruz pulling away now. 50 laps have been completed half the distance here for the WKZQ 101. This mid-race recap brought to you by Custom Building Products. So far, there have been five cautions for 13 laps. There have been two leaders, lap 1 through 30, Larry Caudle, 30 through 50, Mickey York. The top five, Mickey York, followed by Larry Caudle, Mike Swain, fourth, Danny Bagwell, fifth, to Dan Partis. This report brought to you by Custom Building Products here at lap 50. 54 laps, we're ready to go back to green flag racing here in the Sun Fun City, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So glad you could join us here for the Goodies NASCAR Dash Series race at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Mickey York takes up where he just left off at the midway juncture of the event by going back to first place when the green flag flew. He's got a little advantage now over Larry Caudle, about four car lengths. That's about as great of advantage he's had all evening long here at Myrtle Beach. Mike Swaim a little further back trying to clear some traffic as he and Danny Bagwell go by one of the back markers. Danny Bagwell and Mike Swain, the closest two cars on the speedway. Bagwell's pulled right up on the rear bumper, but as you can see, Mickey York has pulled away from Larry Connell, and Connell's trying to narrow that gap back down, make it about three car lengths this time as they come off of turn four. Well, Chuck Carlin, Mickey York, tells everyone just how much he likes Myrtle Beach Speedway. I don't know what it is, but he's been able to bring a car in here that uh, Billy Knight owns, and it has always run well. Somehow he's got the handle on this racetrack dialed in, and he certainly hasn't let the secret out. Larry Caudle has never won an event here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. 
He almost won the first event that was ever won here back in 1988. His teammate beat him by passing him out of turn two to claim victory. That was Andy Belmont, who was uh, Caudill's teammate back in the 1988 racing season. Caudill is charging now. He's been trying the last time by. We saw him drift up a little bit high where he went into the turn just a little too strong. Although he's three or four car lengths back, that, as you mentioned, Mickey York's setup is just so good. York's able to drive to the bottom of the speedway. And Cottle, trying to narrow that gap down, drifts up a little bit high when he gets into the turns. Well, York is driving almost the perfect line around this racetrack. If you watch some of the other divisions that run here on a weekly basis, like the Winston Racing Series late model stock cars, you've got to say that Mickey York has the classic line. Car running at full song all the way around the racetrack. He's basically driving this car effortlessly. It goes right down to the very bottom of the track there, less than a couple of feet off of the apron, then drives that smooth line up against the outside retaining wall. It Caudill's dropping just a little bit farther back right now, and here comes Mike Swain to charge. Let's say a little something about uh, Mickey York and the Cobra Electronics folks. They have a whole group of people from their uh, factory sales force here tonight viewing this race. Also a group of uh, folks from Mickey York's home church in Asheboro, North Carolina are visiting Myrtle Beach and are in attendance tonight, so I know that Mickey would like to win for both the company that's sponsoring him and also for his friends from Asheboro. He's got a nice incentive there and the five car length advantage over Larry Cottle and Cottle has his hands full because Mike Swain's pulled right up on his rear bumper and tries to battle each time going to the inside. Well, up until a few races ago, Cottle and Swain were teammates. They used to drive for David Watson. Caudill still does. Swaim is now racing for Ronald Fox. We have a spin in the second corner. A little bit of tire smoke there from Paul Carr, the Florida racer who started his career back at Daytona in the Florida 200. Did a lazy loop over there and has rejoined the race here. Speaking of Daytona, Dan Pardis running in fifth place at the present time. A longtime competitor in the series, Larry Caudill from Wilkesboro, North Carolina, the driver who's been around since the baby grand days. There's two sides to every driver, and I think that Larry Cottle is an interesting story. After a fun race weekend, there's another side to every driver. It's business as usual. And every day I work for Diversified Electronics and sell Motorola Communication radio systems. Today's Goodies Dash Series continues to grow. With the influx of the sanctioning from NASCAR, Goodies Manufacturing, Gatorade Circle of Champions, Goodyear, all the other product sponsors, the series is, is really taking off. We've run tracks as far away as College Station, Texas, Dover, Delaware, Atlanta, Rockingham, Charlotte Motor Speedway, and, and I'm seeing it and hearing the things that we will continue to go back to some of those tracks. Uh, just recently, I myself landed a good sponsor in Husqvarna Forest and Garden, and hopefully with Husqvarna, Campbell's Soup Company that's sponsoring another car, and the True Value Hardware car, we can see a continuation of major sponsors coming into the division. This series is a fun division. Uh, a lot of the drivers, such as myself, use this as their golf game on the weekends. We've seen many, many teams come in that's family-oriented. You have a father that owns a car, the son drives the car, and all the uncles and grandfathers maintain the car. The division continues to grow, such as having 47 inches for a 30-car field here at Myrtle Beach this weekend. There is another side to most of the drivers, and Larry Cottle feels like most of the uh, competitors in the series thanking everyone for their involvement. Larry, a bit modest, he's won 30 events in the series, dating back to the old baby grand division days in the early 70s. And right now he's riding in second place in the Husqvarna sponsored Dodge Daytona, fielded by David Watson racing out of Boone, North Carolina. Meanwhile, the Billy Knight owned number 24 of Cobra Electronics, Mickey York at the helm, steers the car through turn four in first place. A problem back in the pack, the 77 car, Larry Foxworthy, who picked up the damage to the right front corner on that car earlier in the evening, has spun sideways between three and four. Sherry Blakely smartly drove to the high side of the racetrack and missed him. She just barely squeezes through that one. Sherry's very lucky not to gather up the wall there. Foxworthy, the Kentucky driver now, moves his uh, Weaver and Reeves racing car back around the racetrack. We've got them all bunched back up. We'll be going back to green flag racing action, 69 laps in the book. 
There he goes right back up to the front. He's on the point. The leader, Mickey York, in the 24 Cobra Electronics car. Larry Connell giving chase. Now Mike Swain, former series champion, trying to clear some uh, lap traffic. And Danny Bagwell right behind him. Dan Pardis running in fifth place. Mike getting a little bit marred up in some of that lap traffic. Larry Cottle, though, not content with letting Mickey York slip away. He's within a car length and a half of Mickey York as they dive back into the turns. York taking that smooth line once again. Larry Cottle this time elects to follow him as they come out of turn two and head down the back stretch. A little further back, Danny Bagwell trying to go by Mike Swain. Right now it is a Pontiac, a Dodge, a Ford, and a Pontiac as they come back by to count another lap into the record books here at Myrtle Beach. And now Swain battling side by side with Bagwell. Bagwell hanging on to third only by a cat's breath. Danny Bagwell stuck that nose down low. Swain still fighting up to the high side. It's anybody's race as of right now. Mickey York about four car lengths now ahead of Larry Cottle. Mickey York in a well-prepared automobile here. Certainly has been the class of the field since lap 30 as he continues to lead Larry Caudill. Meanwhile, Mike Swain has claimed third place back after getting by Danny Bagwell. Bagwell's about a car length off of his rear bumper running in that fourth spot. He looked to the outside the last time by. Now tucked back in single file. Mickey York down in the first quarter and across the tunnel. Caudill continues to get chase. York looks like he's pulling away from the second place runner. That's certainly the case. Cottle there sort of dropping back just a little bit. We've seen him come up close on the restarts, but not able to, to get, uh, he loses a little bit of ground as they get on into the race. Mickey York now pulling out to a comfortable lead of about six car lengths. Mickey York up front and on the two-way radio with his crew chief, Billy Bird, probably telling Billy, look, man, I hope I can hang on to the end of this event. I sure want this checkered flag at Myrtle Beach. Mickey's car the smoothest on the field. Larry Cottle running there in second spot. It's another car, a couple of car lengths back. Now Dan Partis having some problems. Partis after a good run as high as fifth. Obviously has a car going up into the outside retaining wall, cutting down a tire. And now the points leader, Ed Howell, has expired. His engine has gone away, and he's into the pit area. Two drivers with fine runs here at Myrtle Beach, both going into the pits right now. Seasoned veteran Mickey York continuing to lead, no caution flag. Talking about young drivers, 16-year-old B.J. Mackey. Can you believe he's out here with a guy like Mickey York racing? I'm 16 years old, and I feel NASCAR gives me the opportunity to race on a professional level. With guys like Wayne Alton of NASCAR, I feel I'm learning to race on a professional level. In years to come, I hope to race in the Bush and possibly Winston Cup. You have to start somewhere, and the Goodies Dash Series has provided that opportunity. But it takes help with sponsorship, and Tommy Tolbert has helped me along this year. Blue Oil laid down several laps ago has collected up David Amick. Midway in the back straightaway, we're under caution here at Myrtle Beach Speedway at lap 69. When we come back, we'll have less than 30 laps remaining. Can Larry Caudle or Mike Swain make up the distance and beat Mickey York here at Myrtle Beach Speedway in the WKZQ 101. More to come in a moment. Welcome back to Myrtle Beach Speedway. Bill Hennessy along with Chuck Carlin in the booth. Down on the pit lane is Tim Myers with one of the drivers who had a problem. This track really taking its toll on uh, some cars tonight. You don't seem to be uh bearing very well either what happened yeah i just uh, i was racing the port car there on the outside and he got under me and i was just racing with him and it looks like we got a bunch of trash on the high side of the racetrack and uh, as soon as i hit that trash uh, the marbles i was just in the marbles i couldn't do nothing with it i got off the brake on the brake hit the throttle and it, it was just gone from there we did the best we could with the colwell banker major league realty rn racing out of daytona beach florida and we're happy to be here at myrtle beach here tonight and um, we had a good run going for ourselves but we hope to be back next year, and we thank Myrtle, Myrtle Beach for having us, and the NASCAR Dash Series is proud to be part of this track, and we hope we can come back here next year. Well, Dan, thank you for those kind words from a Daytona Beach resident to those folks here in Myrtle Beach. The restart, Larry Caudle right on the heels of Mickey York, and now he chases him down into turn number one. He was very, very close. Looked like he bumped him. Let's go to the Husqvarna in-car camera for a replay on that restart. They come beneath the scoreboard. Caudle comes up to the rear bumper. 
York backs off the throttle, realizing now that Caudill has to stand on the brake to keep from pushing him around, and then he accelerates off with a one-car length advantage. A smart move by Mickey York there in front of Larry Caudill. The points leader, Ed Howell, has experienced problems. He's with Tim Myers. What happened, Edward? Well, uh, looks like we blew a head gasket. The motor got real hot, and temperature went up on it, and them cautions was helping me. You know, we'd run four or five laps to get a caution and to go back down. But after we ran 15 or 20 green flag laps, it just couldn't take it anymore. It blew a head gasket, blew up. Ed Howell, sidelined by the misfortunes of a blown engine that'll be costly in his quest for a national championship. The trio, Swain, Bagwell, and Winslow continue to race hard. Mickey York, your leader, but a former winner has been sidelined. Down here in the garage area, this isn't where you want to be. No, it sure is not. We ran, uh, we was running a conservative race to start with. We was trying to get the uh, uh, gas to a pit stop so we could make a gas stop get gas everybody else jimmy though they just kept going so we started back in the back and the car was running real good it was handling real well we was uh, i think i had something for them but uh, i hate it ended like this i like to thank lake norman security systems and emerald cross Plymouth dodge for sponsoring us and uh, part of wheat speedway for having and uh, goodies dash series for having they got a real good series here and i don't get to run with them all the time but we just um running some selective races with them and uh too bad our time of gear had to come out tonight with uh, i think i had something for them johnny chapman's had a very nice career former series champion here in the dash series has had a number of winston cup starts and a former winner here at myrtle beach speedway looking forward to a great career still a very young driver meanwhile mickey york is your leader followed by larry caudle mike swaim is third on the inside there the double zero car bill wilson the zero one car mike leathers leathers the former national champion of sports car club of america open wheel formula 440 racing being sponsored by custom building products as we get ready to go back to green flag racing action here on lap 85. Flagman Jimmy Howell has the green flag in hand. Here comes Mickey York and Larry Cottle. Cottle stays with him this time. He'll pull right up close to the rear bumper as they go into turn one. Out of turn two. Here goes Cottle to the inside. He'll dive down low as they head down the back stretch. Cottle has basically had some developmental problems with the Dodge over the years. Mike Swain drove this car last year along with Lee Farthing. They've done a lot of development work on it. They've got the problems worked out. The car has won twice this season, and he's looking forward to his third win here tonight. So is Mickey York, looking for his third win of the year and his third win here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Call is yet to win one here at the Sun Fun City track. Mickey York and Larry Cottle still nose to tail as they get ready to come through the banking of turn four. When we come back, we'll take you to the end. Back with you at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Mickey York along with Larry Caudle running one and two. In the tower here, Bill Hennessy along with Charles Carlin. In the pit area, Tim Myers covering the action for you as we run into the final stage of this race. Mickey York has been the class of the field since lap 30. Caudle is still giving him chase in the Dodge Daytona. Larry Caudle has gotten so close right up to the rear bumper. This time, this last lap by, we saw him drop off by four car lengths. Now he's trying to close that gap down again. It's another five car lengths back to Mike Swain. Well, this race is far from being over. There's still four contenders still in the competition that could possibly pull off a checkered flag victory here at Myrtle Beach. They are York, Caudle, Swain, and Bagwell. And they're still willing to shuffle the dice here in the closing laps. Cottle is beginning to close that gap ever so much more as they go into turn two. That's where Cottle has his best advantage. He's cut it down to less than three car lengths as they head down the back stretch. For the viewers who are wondering how quick the cars are going around this half mile racetrack, 21.2 seconds right at 92 miles per hour. So very quick laps being turned in by the competitors here in the Goodies Dash Series. We've got about seven laps remaining. Mickey York and Larry Cottle, and now Cottle's beginning to put on the pressure. He's cut it to within a car length. Cottle getting closer and closer to Mickey York, who has won 
twice before here at Myrtle Beach Speedway. Looking for victory number three. Caudill gets up there, starting to fill up the rearview mirror. But he's putting pressure on York. York will sideways momentarily in turn four. Caudill looking a little bit high now as they go into turn one and turn two. Caudill looks down low. Down the back straightaway. This may be Caudill's opportunity. Caudill puts on the heat. The Dodge Daytona rushing behind Mickey York's Cobra Electronics Pontiac. He skates a little high, loses a little steam. Now he cuts over to the inside, trying to make a charge on the leader. Caudle, less than a car length off the bumper. Now in turn two, Caudle will drift up a little bit high as they had to go around Ernest Winslow's car. That gives York an advantage by two car lengths. That break in the momentum gives York the advantage momentarily, but I guarantee you Caudle will be back on his heels as soon as he can get there. They're moving around David Hutto, the 17-year-old former go-kart driver, pulling over to the inside smartly. Now they're moving up on the back of another car to go through the first quarter. York has to go to the high side. Two cars to go around as they head down the back straightaway. York uses those lap cars to his advantage. It's less than a car length with him between himself and Larry Cottle as we get right down to the very final laps. Laps winding down here at Myrtle Beach as they go by the flag stand to put another one in the book. Caudill getting closer and closer. He's got to calculate every move he makes around the racetrack at this point. York going out to the outside retaining wall. Caudill doing the same. This time as they head into turn three, Caudill goes up a little bit high. He tries to look low, coming out of four. And the traffic in front of him. But now Caudill over to the inside. Caudill will make a run on him, but three cars block the way. Otherwise, Caudill could possibly have gotten his car down to the inside and worked on the inside quarter panel of Mickey York. They move by Dwayne Haynes Jr. Another car is in front of them, but we're running down to the closing laps. That's Paul Carr. York goes to the high side. Caudill in tow. Caudill will try to look to the inside. Settles back in single file this time. It's less than a car length off the rear bumper of Mickey York. As they come out of turn two, Caudill looks low again. Remember, Caudill is carrying a Husqvarna in-car camera and he will probably give us the best view of anyone in the closing laps of this competition. Cottle coming out of turn number four. York slips just a little bit. Cottle pulls right up within a few feet of it. Getting closer and closer. Time is running out now. Cottle on the rear bumper will attempt to make a pass on the low side. Out of the second corner, can't do it. Cottle. York checks his rearview mirror. Cottle goes to the outside, comes right up on the rear bumper this time. In-car camera. Final lap here, he dives over to the inside. Checkered flag is waving, Caudill may win. No, he's a half a car length shy of victory. Mickey York will win his third of the season and his third victory here in Myrtle Beach Speedway. Larry Caudill has been denied again, running second. Two KG veterans putting on a great show coming down here to the very end at less than a half a car length separating. Congratulations from the also Rands, Caudill and Bagwell to Mickey York, who has won here at Myrtle Beach Speedway before his sponsors and a group from his church. He's got to be a happy guy. Sherry Blakely has spun on the last lap, will not take the checkered flag. Our congratulations to our winner here tonight, Mickey York, claiming victory number three here in the Sun Fun City in the WKZQ 101 as he pulls in the victory lane. The scene is Victory Lane here at Myrtle Beach Speedway for the WKZQ 101. Custom building products recap of the race. We had nine caution periods for 27 laps. The time of the race, 53 minutes and five seconds. The average speed, 61.41 miles per hour. Two lap leaders, Larry Caudill, one through 30, lap 31 through 101, Mickey York. Our congratulations to him. The margin of victory. A half a car length. Ed Howell maintained his points lead in the series, followed by Larry Caudle, Mickey York, and Will Hobgood. With the rookie of the race honors going to Lyndon Amick. Ready to emerge from the cars, the winner, Mickey York. 26th career victory for the driver who's been competing for 27 years. Former national champion comes around to be interviewed by our Tim Myers. It's got to be a happy moment for a driver to have his family with him here, his wife, Barbara Joe and his daughter Cindy there, along with coroner Billy Knight here, and of course the crew chief Billy Bird. Congratulations in honor of winning here at Myrtle Beach in the WKZQ 101. Mickey York, three in a row. 
Well, it seems good, doesn't it? It's really not three in a row, it's two in a row, but it's three out of four, and it's two for Cobra Electronics. They've sponsored the last two, and we're just tickled to death. You know, it's great to be here, and it's great to have all the Cobra people. Got the youth group from the church here tonight, you know, so everything's, everything's really going good for us. Larry Cottle really giving you a battle there at the end. Larry uh, is a real good competitor. We touched a couple times. You know, he, he let me get straightened up, and I let him, I let the other guys get straightened up, but you can't ask for anybody to run you any cleaner than Larry. He's, he's a good guy. He's never won at Myrtle Beach, and I feel for him because this is a heck of a place to win. Looked like you didn't have any problems at all all night long. Well, the car was loose the biggest part of the night, but I could run right on the bottom and, and stay pretty good. So the car was pretty good, so we... We're not going to complain about it. It was a tick off, but not bad. Congratulations to Mickey York, winner tonight's WKZQ Cobra 101. One of the contingencies of the win here at Myrtle Beach Speedway, the winner is presented with a pair of Abilene boots from J&R Leather and Western Boot Company down in Myrtle's Inlet, South Carolina. Janet LaRock and her friend Cindy Hollingsworth there to present the winner. Second and third place are with Tim Myers. Bill, we got a second and third place finishers right here. Danny Bagwell, driver of the TCI Ford Probe. Danny, good run for you tonight. Hey, it was. It was a good race. I think, you know, everybody got their eyes full tonight. We had a little pushing and shoving, but, that, you know, that's what it's all about on a short track race. And we, we hope we've done a good job for our sponsors. And I got some special friends that came down from New Jersey. I, I hope they're not too didn't let them down too bad. I don't think you did. You put on a good show for the fans here. The fans really appreciate it, and I appreciate it. Good run for you. Larry Cottle, boy, what a race. Oh, man, I enjoy it. And if I have to lose the race, it'd have to be to Mickey York because he and I have been like brothers for years. He's, uh, he's a joy to be around, and I wish him the best for winning. That's three in a row, and it's about time I won one again. I thought you, uh, you had a good chance at, the, at it there at the end of the race. Uh, you were really putting some pressure on him. Well, I could have won the race. Uh, you know what I could have done? But you lose fans that way, and people don't appreciate it, and you tear up race cars. I'd lot rather finish second to that man than wreck him and finish first. There's nothing more exciting than a race here at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and especially in the WKZQ 101. An exciting race right to the finish. Today. Excellent battle all the way over the 101 laps, Chuck Carlin. It certainly was, Bill Hennessy. We promised at the beginning of the race this was going to be one of the most exciting. It certainly was. Larry Caudle and Mickey York putting on a show for us. Great race. Our congratulations as Victory Lane continues in the background to Mickey York and his Cobra Electronics racing team. For Chuck Carlin and Tim Myers, I'm Bill Hennessy. We'll see you at the races.